All right, let's get started, everybody. Thank you for being here today. On behalf of Go Engineer, Steve Darcy, myself, we thank you for being here. We've got, we're going to be covering drawings today. We got a lot to cover, so we're going to jump right in. When we think about how far we've come with drawings, think about this. I found some old images on uh, online and think about these guys that were laying out what looks to be Manhattan. Could you imagine laying there trying to do all these drawings or working in uh, the engineering department and it looked like this where everybody had a design table and trying to make sure that all the views and the view scales match and the, and the text match and the views are, are correct and doing large assemblies. I mean, we've come a long ways. We've come a long ways real fast. And uh, the last thing we wanted to be doing is, uh, well, one, wearing a shirt and tie that worked every day, but two, uh, last thing we wanted to do is get uh, uh, drawing dust all over it. So what are the ways we can use SOLIDWORKS to simplify that and, and work faster? My name is David Kersley, Senior Application uh, with Go Engineer. I'm out of the Austin, Texas office, uh, SOLIDWORKS Elite Certified, spent 20 plus years designing golf equipment, and I'm a Boston Marathoner, I've done it four times, so uh, turn it over to Darcy. Thanks, Dave. Hi, guys. I'm Steve Darcy, Katia Team Lead and SOLIDWORKS Elite Applications Engineer. Uh, just like Dave, I'm out of the Austin, Texas office. I've done the Austin Marathon twice now, and I like anything robotics, automation, technology, computer, software, 3D printing, or any kind of nerdy stuff. So in this first uh, section, we're gonna talk about drawings. What are we gonna cover? We're gonna talk about the drawing setup. And we're gonna talk about how do we get the file properties from our part or our assembly to our drawing. We'll talk about the file locations that SOLIDWORKS is looking for to get these uh, document templates. We'll talk about sheet properties, how to link these properties to our uh, format. We'll talk about the saving of the document and we'll talk about predefined views. So we have a part file. And what I've done is I've made a cube and it looks pretty simple. And, and that's what we'll use here to kind of make sure that our drawing views are set up properly on our templates. So it's just a cube. It's a sheet metal cube that I turned into a nice little model here. And I put all the view orientations on there, right? So if I hit the space bar and turn it or do a normal to face, left is the left side of the cube and right is the right side of the cube. Now at the top of the screen, I'm gonna pick on my file properties here. If I'm not using PDM or 3D Experience Platform, I'll have to enter this in manually. Otherwise, you would have a data card or some type of prompt. These are all the values that are de set default to my part templates. Okay. So now I want to add a material. Right click, edit material. We've all done this. So we got to sign a material, hit apply and close. Okay. That makes it easy. Now, if I go back and look at my properties, I can see that I have linked this uh, property to the SOLIDWORKS material. And every time I change it, it would change over in the evaluated value box. Okay, how do we make a drawing from a part? Pretty simple. Most of us just come up and go, hey, let's hit make drawing from part. Uh, we pick our template, pick the one we want, and we just say, okay. And a little magic happens and suddenly we've got our drawing set up. Where is SOLIDWORKS getting those? And how do I point my SOLIDWORKS to it? First, go to File Locations. Under Document Templates, you'll set a folder. If it's PDM or 3D Experience, you'll link it to that location. The other place we want to look at is the sheet format. We're going to make sure that our sheet format is pointed in the correct location as well. All you have to do is hit Add or Delete here uh, if you want to add it and you're off to the races. I also set mine up under Default Templates under Drawings. I want to make sure that I'm pulling a, drop, a document. And here I can just pick the document, hit OK, and we're all set. I can either prompt the user to select it or I can always use these default templates. I'm going to leave it on prompt and this is what will happen. I got a drawing format open, a drawing document open. The document has both a sheet and a sheet format. The bottom right, I can set the scale. What about the properties of this sheet? Here I can name the sheet. So sheet one, maybe I don't want it to sheet one. I want it to be part. If I want to adjust the scale, I can adjust the scale, okay? I can also set the sheet size. I can say display the formats. I can also create a custom format. I'll put it back on standard for today. I can also set what the next datum label is or my next view label. And I also have the ability to set first and third angle projection. When it comes to third angle projection and first third angle projection, let's go a quick review. For third angle projection, imagine that I do, I pick on the front face of my cube. 
Once I pick on it and I say align to this face, I'm naturally aligned. And if I was to take this box that I've made in sheet metal and unfold it, the left side of the box as it unfolds, that would be my left side. And if I unfold to the right, this would be the right or the top and the bottom. How does that differ from first angle projection? Okay, so let's talk about first angle projection. So if I was to unfold this box a little differently, and as opposed to unfolding rather, I started to rotate the cube, I would have different orientations. So let's think about this. Let's say I got this cube and I'm looking at the front, I'm normal to the front. If I rotate this box over to the right, guess what? I'm gonna see the left side view is up. And if I was to go back to front and rotate that cube the other way, guess what? Right side would be facing towards me. So that would be the difference between your left and your right views there. Um, again, third angle is going to be more like your sheet metal part. We're just unfolding it. And first angle projection, think about it as rotating the cube. Now let's talk about the rest of the properties up here. We got zone parameters and I got rows and columns. You can see over here on the right, if I had just three, it would ABC and one, two, three. And we use these rows and columns so that we can designate areas of change or some type of notation to communicate, hey, I made a change in zone C4. Again, bottom right, I can adjust the, the scaling, right? So that looks pretty good. What about getting my views on here? So I'm gonna go over to the right, pick on the view palette. I'm gonna leave this auto start projected view on. If I wanna bring in annotations from the part, I will click these boxes, right? For right now, I'm going to uncheck these. You'll notice that some of the views have an A, some of them just have an asterisk. What's the difference? The A has means that there's annotations that I can bring in. I'm going to bring in the front view. Let's start simple. There's my front view. And over here on the left, I've got the view properties, right? And because I have auto projected view checked, all I have to do is start to create and move my mouse around and I quickly create those views. Imagine those guys we saw at the beginning, how long they must be, if they were to see this, they'd be like, oh my gosh, this is way easier than laying on these blueprints all day long, right? So it, you'll notice here, I've got all my views in. Now you'll notice I can't move the left view up or down. Okay, well, why can't I do that? Because think of it as parent and child relationship. The front view is the parent. The other views are projected and they are the children. I have to move the front to move the children, okay? Now I can quickly set up my views. Everything looks nice. Now, if I just pick on a view, I can do a couple of things. I can change the display state to hidden with edges or shaded with edges, and I can change the scale. I'm going to leave the scale alone for this. Okay. And that's how quickly and easy it is to add to our drawings. Now over here in the view palette, you'll notice at the top, all my views are here. If they're not, there's a little green recycle symbol to the right of angle box there. And you would just hit that and your views would refresh. Now, what about the sheet format? We've been looking at the sheet. Let's talk about the sheet format. The sheet format is behind there, okay? So all our sheet properties set up. Let's go right click and say edit sheet format. To get back out of that, just go to edit sheet. Again, you have the sheet and the format. This is a document that contains both a sheet and a sheet format. Let's go back and right click, edit sheet format. Well, notice down here in our title block, a bunch of blue lines. Guess what? That's just an undefined sketch. These are just lines. And you can come in here and customize this however you want. I can go to the sketch tab up here at the top and I can start to draw in additional boxes that I might note some text or a property from the part or the assembly. I can delete these lines, do a little power trim, move things around. Can I do sketch relations in here? If I pick a line, move them up or down. Yeah, great. Maybe I want to do a coincident between these two endpoints. Cool. Now this one moved. Could I come in here and add dimensions, Dave? Heck yeah, go for it. Make, set this up however you want for your company standards. And that's all we're doing. Now you'll notice that ANSI, the AS, AISI 304 is a proper way to say that populated in. How do I link my properties to a text box? In this case, I've already got a text box added. If you don't, just go to the top of your screen, add the annotations, add a note. Go to model found here. Those are the file properties. Those are from the file. And I'm just going to pick on title and notice that it populated in angle box. Beautiful. All right. What about a revision? Okay. But I wanted to link revision here. Now, if I'm using PDM or if I'm using 3D experience platform, this is going to be set up a little bit differently. You're going to link that through your system, your data management system. Here, I'm going to link to a property and I want to go grab the drawn by initials. But I don't see it. So how do I create that? 
if I pick on file properties here, I'm back in the file properties at the part level, okay? So here, I noticed I'm missing a couple of things like part number and drawn by. So I'll quickly add to who is, what's the number 14001, okay? Again, if this was 3D Experience Platform PDM, this would uh, be pre-populated. I'll do drawn by and I'll put in DMC and I'll say, okay, all right, all good. Now, if I go to my property and I scroll down, I now see my drawn by and my part number right there. Okay, so again, how would I link that? Again, I picked this text and what you'll have to do if you have pre-existing text in a box is just delete it out. Uh, but in this case, just come down here, pick part number, boom, we're all set. What about that drawn by just as a refresher? I pick on that little box. I wanna apply the property to it. I'm gonna go to get the property from the file and say drawn by, and that pulls my initial thing. Cool, this is great. What if I wanna add a logo? Okay, so I just open up the logo, crop it, clip it, however you want. Just in this case, I just cropped it, put a little control C, click on your drawing format, control V, and that'll paste it in there. Now scale your, your logo in there, put your address on there, whatever you want. I might edit the sheet format, now I'm back at the sheet. And now what I have to do is I have to save it. Okay, this is a document. I wanna save everything so that I can point SolidWorks to this document, okay? I'm gonna say DOT, drawing template. It's a document template. I'm gonna call it DMD-C-inch. I'm gonna override the existing one because I made changes to it. The other one I wanna do is do a save as template. And I'll save that to a folder or a unique location in PDM or somewhere, uh, maybe a bookmark on my 3D Experience platform. And the reason we did this one using the 3D Experience platform is because Barth Darcy and I are using the 3D Experience platform and I wanted him to use these formats when he creates his drawings later in the presentation. So now everything's set up and I'm gonna close it. Okay, so we've, we've defined where our locations are. We've defined our document templates. We've set everything up. Let's go grab that document and open him up. And so there he is. I got my correct one. So if I drag in my view, there's front view. Everything populated correctly down here in my title block, right? So now everything looks good. If it doesn't, just go back and repeat that process. This is just one of the ways you can do this. There's, there's a couple of different ways. I just find this method to be the easiest for me. I can quickly test what's happening. Now, what about predefined views, right? Is there a way that I can make a drawing from my part and have it pull in views automatically? I don't want my engineers to go in and create the views. All right, so I know I've got the right one. Pick on the drawings tab and pick on predefined view. Drag your mouse down, left click. Okay, now over on the left, you're gonna get this property manager for this view, and you're gonna pick on front view. All right, for, or at least I am, just for today's demonstration. Whatever view orientation you want, just pick it. I can set a custom scale. I'm gonna leave the sheet scale at whatever it is, and I can define the display style. Hidden lines removed. Maybe I want shaded with edges. Maybe I want hidden lines. Maybe I want wireframe. Pick whatever you want. Now I've got this one. I'm gonna say projected view. This is my front. I'm gonna project out top, okay? I can pick that view. Um, pick the, again, the, think of it as the parent. I'm going to create a projected view for the child. Now I'm going to go back and put my isometric. I'll go back to predefined view, pick it. And over on the left side, the view that I want it to be is isometric. So I'll select it there. Okay. Now, again, I want to save this. So I'm going to do save to this PC or save it to the platform, save it into your vault document template, right? Drawing template here, a DOT. And I'm gonna come in here and I'll give it a unique name so that I know that it's pre-populating with four views. The other one was just C inch. I'll put C4 dash inch so I know that it's predefined four views. Okay, I'll hit save, close that guy out. Now when I go to file, make drawing from part, I see that DND C4, right? I hit okay and guess what? I'm not spending time dragging the views in. They're already there. Maybe I change that to shaded and I'm off to the races. So that was a quick way to get all of my views on there. What's another one to do it is make drawing from part. We'll go to the one that doesn't have the predefined view and there it is. Now at the top of your drawing tab, you'll notice that there's standard three view. So if I pick standard three view over on the left is to say, what, what part am I bringing in? If I needed to browse for it, I could. I'll hit the green check and guess what? It automatically brings in front, top and right side view. If I want to add in an isometric or a trimetric view, I absolutely can't.